The most complicated instrument in the universe and the most amazing organ. Consuming just enough energy to power a light bulb, the brain can perform an outstanding range of tasks. But the ultimate challenge for the brain is to study itself. In July of 2016, researchers from all over the world embarked on a cruise from St. Petersburg to Nizhny Novgorod, seeking to find answers which will lay path to the future of neuroscience. The Volga Neuroscience Meeting 2016 was organized by Lobachevsky University. I think our key result today is that we got everyone together in one place. We have very prominent researchers in their respective fields, and the mere fact that they chose to come here and speak at the sections, discuss all these issues, this all raises the meeting to a very high level. I think it's a special conference for three reasons. First of all, it's a unique mixture of scientists from Russia and also from around the world very high-level science. Secondly, it's a conference on a boat, which means that you cannot escape, and so that helps people to, to mix and get to know each other. And finally, it's, I think it's a, um, a special opportunity to discover Russia. And with this boat going down to Volga, you're exposed to many different landscapes, many different aspects of Russia, and this is a really great opportunity. More than 200 top neuroscientists from Russia, USA, Europe, Japan and India came to talk about breakthroughs in neuroscience. They talked about the structure and evolution of the brain, about the behavior of certain neurocells, about the ways we can interact with the neural system. Every scientist who loves this field would be lucky to listen to presentations and to meet in person those of his colleagues whose names he had only seen in the top scientific journals. Everybody knows the neurons, very few people know the glial cells, and it's about 50-50 in the human brain. So microglial cells are now recognized as elements which respond in any type of brain disease. Uh, may it be Alzheimer's disease, may it be schizophrenia, uh, glioma, what I uh, cases which I've mentioned, but all other diseases too. And we have not yet completely understood what they are doing in this disease. And the idea basically is uh, that we somehow target these cells and thereby influence the disease in a positive way for the patient. I've been working on embryonic neural stem cells, which actively divide, but we are now moving toward the adult neural stem cells, which are still present in the brain, in the adult brain, but they are mostly dormant. So if we can control adult neural stem cells uh, to function like embryonic neural stem cells, it would be very nice for many brain diseases, for regional to medicine in the future. My own personal interest is, is in trying to figure out the neural code. So in other words, the, the language, the set of rules that neurons use to communicate with each other and, and represent information and store information. And there were several talks at the meeting so far, which uh, suggest that we're making great progress in this field and where I think uh, it's going to bring us much closer to cracking the neural code in the next five to ten years. One can envisage that if we fully understand the neural code and if we have powerful ways of interacting with neurons in the brain that you could that you could help even healthy brains to become more efficient and to remember things more efficiently, store information more efficiently. I think being a neuroscientist is a special privilege because you're studying the computer that controls everything. So it's sort of like I have a secret um, you know, window on things. I think at the deepest level, the study of the brain what better way to ask who we are and what we are doing here? How does how does this computer arise that gives us our sense of of self and our abilities and, uh, and I study how it is constructed? So to me, that is the joy. The best incentive to keep working is seeing your world-renowned colleagues' interest in your ideas. Poster presentations by young researchers became the important milestone in their neuroscience careers.
I will be presenting my work, which is a part of my dissertation, and I would really love to hear the expert opinion of world's best researchers. My research is of an interdisciplinary nature, and here we have researchers from many different fields, neurobiologists and specialists in modeling of brain processes. It was very interesting. A lot of people stopped by my poster, and they all seemed very interested. They asked questions, and I got a chance to talk about my research. Such conversation helps spark new ideas or hint that something needs changing, alteration, or just a little bit of more thought. One of the main reasons that I think Russia has a great future is the genuine interest in the eyes of students. This was one of the reasons that convinced me to come back here and to start the laboratory. This genuine interest, this hunger for doing global science. And as long as we have students, PhDs, who are eager to do such science, I think we have a bright future ahead of us. Neuroscience is a young, interdisciplinary field. It provides topics for research to scientists from various fields. It lets physicists, biologists, chemists, mathematicians work together. Brain research is a global team effort. I think scientists are an open community, and, and I think this is uh, what is important. And we have to learn more about each other. If you look at the, the history over the last 100 years, uh, scientists were always at the forefront for international collaboration, for generating peace. And uh, so the, the communication between human beings and the direct face-to-face -face communication is something which really changes the world. I think one of the most important things is to recruit uh, external scientists to make sure that you don't end up in a sort of incestuous um, uh, uh, hiring process where you just hire people who have always been there because you need influx of new ideas. That also means uh, sending students abroad. I mean, you do that already. I have students from the university who come to me for half a year and learn techniques in my lab and then come back. Um, do more of that, keep doing that, um, and make sure you hire people who've been abroad. Yeah. Definitely what comes from this Lubaczewski University is the uh, neuroengineering kind of technological angle uh, coming from physicists, engineers and so on. And I think this is very important for neuroscience in particular, that is the most multidisciplinary area of research. I do have physicists and chemists with whom I collaborate or even in my lab, and this is the, the way to go. So uh, this kind of experience is very good. The Volga Neuroscience Meeting has put the name Lobachevsky University on the global map of neuroscience. Development of this uh, uh, neuroscience activities at the, at the University of Lobachevsky uh, actually resulted in the organization of this meeting because any research uh, has to be exchanged with, uh, with colleagues and we invited scientists from other universities to uh, show uh, our achievements, uh, to exchange ideas, and this is uh, absolutely expected uh, that at some uh, stage we have to communicate to the world and to tell that uh, Lobachevsky University is uh, one of the leaders, uh, not only in Russia, but also in the world in research in the field of neuroscience. We at Lobachevsky University believe it is a very important field. We have made certain progress and we will keep up our good work.